Futai? Yes. La Vila? Congo? La Buda Fashe Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we consider it as a religion because, uh, number one, we start voodoo with uh, a Catholic prayer, and um, but we do have our own voodoo prayers, and uh, we have to ask God permission to do what we have to do. Some of our spirit people call it falling angels. They're not falling angels. They actually based to our ancestors in our spirit from Africa, from from uh, the Taino Indian, the Awawak, and the Caciques. So all these spirits, we know how to invoke them to come down. We do interpolation for them to come to us, to deliver messages, to cure people if you're sick, to do remedies and stuff like that. Some people do a certain spirit can you help me with uh, my job? Can you help me with my love? Can you help me with my kids? They are there for that. Would you say that Haiti, like New Orleans, is a bit of a crossroads with these cultures coming together? I think so. I think so. Because some of our the slaves that from Haiti, they brought them here. That's why New Orleans is beyond us. New Orleans is very different yes. than any other area in, in America. It's, it's probably the closest to Haiti in many ways um, because it was so malleable and permissive. You know, when slavery was here, we had an interesting thing called free people of color, yes. which they didn't really have in most of American slavery, but here they did. And they lived here in this neighborhood. This yes. is the Treme. And um, so for me, I, I wanted, you know, when I asked you to do Hexfest, I know people want to know about Haitian voodoo, but they also want to know about the magic. Now, is Haitian voodoo a magical, would you consider it a magical path as well? Yes, it is. Because um, it's so magical, like, uh, people think, like, voodoo, it's only to turn people into zombies. Yes, we do have it, but I don't. Oh, politicians do. It's, <laughs> you know, but it is magical because we do, we, if you have a sickness, sometimes the doctor cannot cure through voodoo. With the herbs, we know how to cure it. We will take care of it. I have a client of mine, I remember, that we went to all kind of doctors, spent thousands of dollars. She couldn't keep nothing down. She was like anorexic, and she comes to me and she says, I need help, can you help me? I said, the only way I could do you, I have to take you to Haiti because I don't have all the herbs here. So I took her back to Haiti and I cured her with the herbs in my country. It has to be fresh. Some of the herbs has to be fresh, they can't be dry. Now, when you say the herbs, the herbs, we mm -hmm. just had a girl from Welsh, uh, from a, a Welsh witch here from okay. Wales. I said it's herbs, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say herbs. Um, would that type of practice have been taught to the Haitians by the Tainos because yes. they were the indigenous plants? Yes, they are because they are the ones <coughs> that actually. They will tell you the name of it, how to pick the leaves, because like they said, the leaves bleeds and they cry. You they may not hear it hear it but you have to know how to pick it up you know break it you have to ask permission sometimes you have to give an offering to the tree it's a big part of witchcraft yes, to understanding the secret life and, yes. and soul of plants yes. and their connections to other energies and plants and things like that so yes. it, there's a lot of commonalities exactly you know the african brought us how to do the the cure with animal because the Indian didn't do any cure with animal they do it with herbs and the African brought us to do brought us brought to us the the animals in order we could do the bloody sacrifice with their feathers with their skins with the blood that they have so we could cure people with it. And what do you say to these people that 
because here in America, people will sometimes freak out. Oh my God, they kill you. Like when you sacrifice an animal in this tradition, like what is the process of that? I mean, is it, is it something sacred to you? Right? I mean, it is very sacred to me. It's just like people will ask me, why do you sacrifice animals? I will answer them. Abraham offered his child to God. And, the, and God says, no, send him an animal, a four-legged, instead to sacrifice. It's the same thing. I can't sacrifice a human being. I sacrifice an animal to say thank you to God, to say thank you to the earth, my ancestors, and say thank you to feed the trees that's feeding me, that's treating me, that's curing other people. That's what it is. And in Haiti, don't they eat some of the animals anyway afterwards? No, the animal, there's certain animals, if you do a, a sacrifice, just sacrifice for someone that was sick, you can't eat that. But if you do an offering to say thank you, you have to eat, you have to cut the meat, give it to other people, people that who doesn't have anything. You share it with the whole neighborhood. And in a way that's making it sacred, which is where that word you comes know. from. Anyway, you know, for those of us, I when, when we first talked about doing this class, you know, I, I you know, I just said earlier, I, I'm the fanboy, you know, I look at all this magical stuff and I get excited because I don't understand all of it, you know. I know the things I know, but, you know, some of this is very different to me. And, you know, of course, a lot of us only saw movies like The Serpent and the Rainbow and you talked to me about pots and that you could put the spirits of people in the pots. Yes. Now, why would you want to put them in a pot? Well, let me give you one example. If I die tomorrow, right? I'll give it to you as a whole myself. If I die tomorrow, it wasn't time for me to go. My God, kids, they will capture my spirit and put it in a pot and do certain <coughs> rituals for me because I'm a high priestess. In a year and a day later, they will have to yeah, but you get at least like, you know, she has It's a, not no jitter. You don't well, even have you know, to I dream of Jeannie. She had this nice little <laughs> sofa in her bottle and, you know, it was comfortable in there. You no. know, it's a, I'm a little scared. Brian, you ain't putting me in no bottle. <laughs> um, now, what about the negative side? Do you ever put people in a bottle that, to keep them from harming people? Well, if you eat very easy and someone kills you, I could capture your spirit in order for me to use it for my own purpose. Okay? I'm going to be at this class. <laughs> I could use it for my own purpose to harm other people. I could command it. I need you to do this for me because at the end there will be a reward. That's, That's how we do it. Like if you, if you read my book, it's a little similar to some of the things I do. You know, my class is actually going to be on uh, witchcraft as a form of necromancy. And when I built this work that I do, a lot of what I do involved a lot of the ancient Greco-Roman. But one thing I wasn't as crazy about was it was very like, you do this. I said, you know what, I'm going to try it a little bit. I'll call the spirit and I'll ask them. You know, and they'll get that. Sometimes it might be honey or an offering. You know, I like to give people offerings that were relatable to them. You know, if my grandmother loves cigarettes, I'm going to give her cigarettes. If my uncle liked dumb, I'm going to give her dumb. Most of my work as a witch, and I, I think witchcraft, the further back it goes, is very ancestral. And that's where I think a lot of the parallels between people and wins. Yes. But what about, okay, this, everybody wants to know. Can they really make zombies? Yes, they can. And is this like a powder? You know, like does that really work? Well, I don't know exactly the whole formula to make the zombies, but they do make zombies, and the zombies do exist. So they anybody do. watching this, if you have the recipe to this, <laughs> my email is. <laughs> You don't want to give me that. No, I can't give you that. <coughs> no, they don't ever want me having that. But that's not going to work. Yeah. I'll have half the city in one of my Oh, areas. my goodness. <laughs> oh, no. I, well, I mean, I'm just excited about this. You talked a little bit about mirror magic, too. I know witches use mirror magic a lot. Yes. 
how do you and Katie use the mirror? The mirror magic, we could do mirror magic like uh, the mirror magic the mirror magic we could do mirror magic like if I'm in, let's say I'm here, I need to communicate with somebody in Haiti and hurt the person. There's certain incantation that you could prepare and then you say it and you call the person. And the person will actually hear your voice and turn around and you could take, use a knife and stab it through. <coughs> yes. Remind me never to upset you. <laughs> I know in Salem witchcraft we do a thing called putting people's heads on. Okay. You know, so we'll go into a, an altered state of consciousness and we visualize that person in front of us, turn them around and put on their head to sort of do a little something, something. You know, maybe we want to know what's wrong with them so we can do healing. And maybe we want to get them to do a little of this or a little of that. But this is just really, I feel like what you're talking about, you know, we hear a lot today in the pagan world about the religion of African traditions and what have you. And you hear about hoodoo, you hear about contra, but you don't really hear a lot about the magic of the island of Haiti, which is really why I wanted to They don't to want do people this. to know it. They don't really want to oh, know it. breaking because, the rules? Yes, but guess what? Are you like a rule breaker? I, no, I, mean, I live <laughs> dangerously, you know? I like it like that because people has to know that we do, we do certain things it goes like even back again to the mirror if somebody kills somebody in the family okay and you want to know who killed them we could call upon that dead in the mirror to tell us who killed you yes see this kind of scares me but i'm looking forward to here's the thing i mean i feel like when i look at traditional witchcraft Wicca, Haitian voodoo, conjure, you know, all of these religious practices that have magic in them, it really is what separates us as a whole, you know, what Brian calls the magical community, from the rest. Because what we're doing is we're taking our own power. And I'm just, it's really mind blowing to me, like when, I, when we saw everybody come together last year, it was just so incredible to me because I, you know, I feel like, you know, you've got a lot of these festivals out there, and some of them are very powerful. A lot of times they tend to focus just on the religious aspects of things. And you know, for us, we really wanted Hexfest to dig right into the magic because for us, it was about changing your life. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's transformation. It's it's nice. Because when I was in Hexfest last year, I even talk about it. I call my people, I said, this is my first time I experienced that, and I love it, because the energy is the energy that you, you feel, you embrace, you know, you feel so warm after it, you said, oh, there is something that I was missing, now I'm almost complete. Well, you become part of it, you know, I mean, I think the thing for me about New Orleans, why people should be going to a magical festival here versus wherever you know, the tent city happens to be. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I could tell stories. But um, I think why, well, first off, you're in a hotel. Um, you know, nothing against the tent, you know, community festivals, but I, you know, I'm more of the Barbie theme. But you're in a hotel, you're in the French Quarter, which is one of the most magical communities here. You're in the Treme, and you're in these places where, where history is alive. And we are all 